to the Desert Wine Guys YouTube channel or whatever channel you're seeing this video on. Uh, so today I have a very special treat, okay? It's a 2019 Pine Ridge Napa Valley Cabernet Sauvignon, okay? Um, the wine cost me 50 bucks uh, while I was at a big warehouse type liquor store the other day. And I got it at Father's Day and this Desert Wine Girl said, you know what, you can go ahead and spend 100 bucks, whatever you want to buy it on, okay? Now, a lot of you guys are thinking out there, well, Father's Day? You can buy wine? Well, you buy wine any other day. But you know what? When you are a husband whose wife loves him so much, like my wife loves me and lets me buy whatever I want at any time, that's, that's pretty sweet. That's pretty cool. So, went out and bought the wine. Also got another wine we'll be reviewing in a few days. It's a BV wine, BV Tapestry Cabernet Sauvignon. So that's going to be really exciting. I want you to look out for that video as well. But getting back to this wine, uh, the wine com the wine cost me 50 bucks, as I said. Comes in at 15% alcohol. You guys got to forgive me. There's a lot going on here, so I'm going to look at my notes today. Comes in at 15% alcohol. And uh, as far as the Stag's Leap uh, area goes, that's where the winery is located. Okay, so I first discovered this, this winery, I'd probably say about 10 years ago. Miss Desert Wine Girl and I were cruising through Napa Valley, and we came across this winery, and we stopped in there, and it was really nice, okay? Uh, the wine was phenomenal, and since then, it's become one of my favorite wineries out there in Napa. Um, I don't buy it too often because it is 50 bucks, and... If I do buy it, I don't normally review it on this channel because this is wine for the average wine lover and $50 compared to $13 and change, which is the average wine price, really doesn't go over too well. But I had to share this wine with you guys, okay? So let me talk about what I got on the palate here. I got blueberry, uh, a spiced clove, a Bing cherry. Now the Bing cherry here, I gotta talk about the Bing cherry is kind of to me part of the little bit of a negative that's going on with the wine because the Bing Cherry is really fruit forward. Those of you who follow this channel, follow my blog, desertwineguide.blogspot.com, know that I'm not a big lover of fruit forward red wine. Honestly, I'm not a big forward, a big lover of fruit forward white wine as well, but uh, you know, there's times when a red wine can get away with it, provided they have other things to back it and kind of support it. This, to an extent, is one of those red wines that can do that. But do notice I said to an extent. We'll get into that later. Now, normally when you're reviewing a wine, there's been studies done that say you can pick up two notes, or three notes, I'm sorry, on a wine. And after that, you're nose or your palate just kind of deadens to everything else. So what I do, especially on a wine like this, is I'll take a break. I'll come back and I'll be able to pick up some more stuff that's going on in that wine. And in this wine, as I said, I'm getting a fruit forwardness. There's also a, a, a rich type plushness to the wine that I'm getting. Um, definitely a spiced oak, spiced plum, and a tobacco note here that comes in. And you put it all together, you still have a fruit forward wine. You, in my opinion, are bordering on a little bit of jamminess as well. You haven't gone quite over to jamminess, but you're kind of bordering there, okay? So we'll just keep you at fruit forward. Um, getting back to the origins of the wine where the grapes are from though, uh, Pine Ridge, this is Pine Ridge's, from what I'm gathering, this is one of Pine Ridge's uh, lower end of Cabernet Sauvignon. But still, even then, they got their grapes from, of course, the Stags Lee District, Howell Mountain, ABA, Oakville, Rutherford, and the Carneros region. So, you talk, you're still looking at a wine here that has grapes from very prestigious areas. And in reality, for $50, you're kind of getting the steal. Of course, at the end of the day, what really matters is how the wine tastes. You can get grapes from anywhere, but how does the wine taste? How does it come across to you? Um, let me back up a little bit and get to the nose for a second. I, I've got clove that came across first on the nose, and clove kind of dominates the nose here. 
but it doesn't, it's not overwhelming, it's not crazy. It doesn't like just, just like inundate the palate. It's just presented kind of moderately. Um, moderately also, you, you get the impression of a bright, uh, a bright black cherry too when you're first smelling the wine. Um, now moving into the taste again, that black cherry is there, but it's not necessarily bright. It's kind of, it's kind of a, a kind of a presents itself with a little bit of a darker presentation. And uh, overall, I have to say the wine is is very nice. You can definitely tell that there was a lot of thought and effort put into the wine. Quality grapes were used on the wine. Uh, giving you my rating right now, and I'm only about a quarter of the way through the bottle. Giving you my rating right now, I would probably put it at 93 points, and uh, not at 94. And I'll tell you why. 94 means it goes to the wine cellar. Okay. And as I said, the wine is a bit on the fruit forward side, and to me, to me that's a negative. I can definitely see a lot of you guys out there really falling in love with this wine. Because from what I understand, uh, the, the, the texting back and forth and speaking to some of you guys, you do enjoy a fruit forward wine, a, a wine, a red wine that's kind of on a brighter side. And this wine has that, but it also has those quality notes too. Those notes that let you know this is a serious wine. And um, I just personally feel 93 is where it's at. Uh, I don't, I would not put this wine in my wine cellar. Now, for me to say that, it kind of hurts me a little bit because Pine Ridge is one of my favorite wineries. And for $50, I guess I got what I expected. I can't complain. I, I can't say I expected more. Uh, I got I got what I expected. I'm very pleased with what I got. 93 points is, is a pretty nice rating after all. Um, it's a very dark wine. Uh, it, it, it's not like super dark. I can, I can still see my fingers slightly through it. And in the room right now, it's a little dim in here too. So uh, yeah, it's a nice wine. And 93 points is where I'm going to put it. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Would I recommend you guys go out and buy the wine? Yes, I would. I For 50 bucks, I would recommend you go out and buy the wine. I think you will enjoy it. And I think you will find it as a quality wine. And I think many of you actually might go ahead and put it in your wine cellar. Now, having tasted the wine, can the wine age? Yes, the wine can age. Uh, I would certainly put another 10 years on this wine, maybe 15 years on this wine if kept in perfect condition, perfect uh, environmental conditions. Um, and that's pretty much it guys. Uh, go out and buy the wine, get a bottle of the wine, taste the wine. And if you like the wine, go out and get another bottle, put it away. If you were going to just buy one bottle, I would probably say that, that the majority of you guys out there would probably love this wine. So just buy a bottle put it away for a few years, let it age a little bit in perfect cellar conditions, and I think you'll have a really nice wine that you'll really enjoy. So, thanks for checking out the Desert Wine Guy, guys, and uh, I'll speak to you guys later.